This is the HP Star Wars laptop. Featuring a Star Wars theme, this laptop features a Skylake i5 processor, a GT940M GPU, and a 1080p IPS display. But is it actually any good, and can it run Star Wars Battle? Over the last five days, I found out. Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to another video in this new studio. What we've got here is the Star Wars laptop. And the Star Wars laptop is by HP, and this was a laptop that came out a few months ago. Yes, you guessed it, around about the time of The Force Awakens. And the reason it's now relevant again is because it's now had some price drops, and so in theory it should have gone from a laptop that's probably pretty damn cool, uh, but probably a bit too expensive, to something that actually might represent good value to everyone. So let's take a look, and the first thing to do is actually properly to take a look. So the top of this laptop is probably the best thing about it. It looks really, really nice, and when I sort of saw the pictures of it before I actually got my hands on it, I had to say I was thinking it wasn't really going to feel very good. Uh, but I was wrong. It's actually a nice brushed plastic finish, and not only does it look pretty cool and feature this cool Star Wars design with Darth Vader on it, but it actually feels pretty nice to touch as well. Yes, it's never going to compete with the likes of the Dell XPS or the MacBook at this price, but actually it does represent pretty good value so far. Once we go to the side of the laptop and we start looking at the ports, you'll find on the left hand side we have two USB ports, one is USB 3 and one is just the standard USB. We find a DVD burner, we find the power port and we also have an Ethernet port. Moving to the right side of the laptop, we have USB, uh, this is another super speed USB 3. We have HDMI and we have our headphone jack and we have our indicator lights. So we pretty much got most of the ports here uh, that I would want. You might want something a little bit different. Some people might want DisplayPort or Thunderbolt or something like this. But on a more budget orientated laptop, I have to say, uh, I think you've got quite a nice selection really. And it's quite nice that although it's still quite thin, we haven't compromised on things like Ethernet ports, which if we do want to do some serious gaming on this, uh, then that is actually going to come in hand a little bit later on. Open this thing up and on the inside it's a slightly different story. The Star Wars theme continues and this time it's a Stormtrooper design rather than a Darth Vader one. But the main difference here is that the inside just doesn't feel as nice as the outside. You've got more of a sort of glossy finish in here. And it's not so much the finish, it's just the fact that whenever you touch it, it makes a horrible noise and it just feels a bit hollow. And unfortunately, the build quality here really does feel like a budget laptop rather than the top, which was sort of competing with something more of the mid range. The keyboard, though, is pretty nice. We'll talk about it properly in a minute, but it has backlit keys with red backlights. And while it is very difficult to read the keys when the backlight is off, as soon as you turn the backlight on, the whole thing really does look pretty cool. In terms of keyboard, you've got pretty much all the buttons you want. You've got mixture function buttons uh, that also just work whenever you want to do something like Alt F4, and it's basically a nice size and it's pretty easy to use. But you also find the display which has moderate bezels. Again, nothing really to write home about, but nothing terrible at all either. But you do find a full HD IPS display. And I was very surprised. I genuinely didn't realize, I mean, on the website it just says a full HD display, but as soon as you actually realize that it's an IPS display, I was a bit taken back. I was like, wow, for something that could cost you £430 if you go for the one without the dedicated graphics card, that's pretty nice and pretty rare to see. But it's not all great news with the screen, unfortunately, because one thing I did notice is that this thing is terrible if you put it in a room with a load of light. It's not that the screen is reflective, it's more of a matte finish and it doesn't really seem too reflective, but it's just the screen brightness is way too low. And unless you want to actively uh, use it inside all the time, you are going to run into issues if you try, ever try and use it in a really brightly lit environment like a conservatory, or dare I say it, if you take it outside into bright sunshine. So that's it for the physical overview of the laptop, but what is this thing actually like to use and what is its performance like? Well, I'll start with the specifications. It features an i5-6200U, and this is a Skylake processor, 6 gigabytes of RAM, and it features, sadly, no SSD, a 1 terabyte uh, normal spinning hard drive. This model as well, though, also features a GT940M NVIDIA graphics card with 2 gigabytes of VRAM. It's going to depend depending on the model you go for, though, and the one that they're really trying to almost, it seems like, get rid of, and the ones that's 
uh, really is in the sale doesn't feature this graphics card and is available for about £430. But if you live in the US you have quite a choice of different models and different uh, SKUs but I would advise going for more of a cheaper laptop because of course the build isn't really going to change or it's not going to change as you move up the specification so you'll end up spending more for parts uh, and the actual physical appearance and feel of the laptop won't change. So if you are somewhat of a gamer or someone that wants to play uh, some games I'd recommend that you go for the base model that features the graphics card and if you don't really play games then I'd recommend you go for the cheapest one uh, and then maybe think about replacing the hard drive with a SSD. In terms of general use though I have to say I've been pretty impressed with this thing. Yes it doesn't feature an SSD and the brightness doesn't really go that high but for most people I don't think either of these things are going to be a massive cause for concern. The overall thing is pretty medium weight um, so it's fairly easy to chuck in a bag without worrying about it but if you are someone that wants to carry something around with you all day then uh, that might cause a problem in the long term but yeah it's not really too much of an issue. If you're someone that wants to watch a lot of YouTube videos then I've found that it handles 1080p YouTube videos without any problem whatsoever. There has been a couple of hiccups but literally these have been two small blips uh, throughout the five days I've been testing it and I wouldn't really cause, uh, well I wouldn't say this is a cause for concern at all. One thing that might be a cause for concern though is the battery life and it's been a bit strange because it's never really been that consistent. Some days it will last most of the day, some days it won't. And if you're the sort of person that is going to be using this around the house then it's really not a problem whatsoever. But if you actually want to rely on this day to day um, then I would probably suggest that you seriously consider whether this is the right product for you uh, because I just found it to be very inconsistent. As for the trackpad and the keyboard, both work and both work pretty well. The trackpad I would occasionally find it didn't react exactly how I wanted it to and it doesn't feel anywhere near as premium as something that is a lot more premium but again for a budget laptop it actually is pretty nice to use and the keyboard as well for typing on it I found it to actually be pretty damn good. It is annoying though that you can't really see the keys very easily when the backlight is off because the battery life is so inconsistent it would be quite nice to say do a bit of battery saving and turn the uh, keys off uh, but sadly if you do that it's a lot harder to type on uh, but yeah I guess at this price point uh, you, you have to have something to moan about but what about the gaming performance though um, this is not really a gaming laptop it does feature an Nvidia graphics card if you go for that SKU but it's not a gaming laptop but can it run Star Wars Battlefront I didn't think it would be able to I thought it was a Star Wars laptop and then as soon as you throw Star Wars Battlefront at it it will fall over but to my amazement, not only does it run it, it runs it really well. And you can genuinely play Star Wars Battlefront. So if you follow me on Snapchat, you'll see that this morning I was playing it for half an hour while lying in bed with a controller, and I was playing it quite happily. If you want to run this at 1080p at max settings, it's not happening. If you want to play it at lower settings, so I sort of took the medium preset and then lowered it slightly, uh, so turn things like ambient occlusion and anti-aliasing off and I was achieving anywhere between 35 and 55 frames a second at around about 720p resolution which for the majority of people that are going to buy this laptop that is more than they need and I just think it's good because when I was buying laptops like this uh, a few years ago I never got performance like this I was spending about 400, 450 pounds and I just never got performance like this so I was just pleasantly surprised and as soon as you throw a lighter title at it as well like something like Super Meat Boy of course you're looking at 1080p 60fps no issues. So there we have it the Star Wars laptop is not very expensive yet it can still run Star Wars Battlefront not something I expected at all. Obviously it goes without saying if you get the one that doesn't feature the dedicated Nvidia graphics card you're probably not going to be able to play it not least at a very playable settings anyway you might be able to get it to open but yeah that's not the same as playable and I just think it's great that you can go out and buy a laptop now for about £550 and actually be able to play some of the top games without issue especially at settings that will rival consoles it's a very nice thing to see. And so with that, that brings us towards the end of this video and to the conclusion. This probably was quite a good purchase at the time it came out if you were a big Star Wars fan, but for everyone else they'd be better off looking at something that did away with all the gimmicks and literally just focused on performance. But now this thing is a lot cheaper, it's very easy to recommend, which is why this wins the top purchase award on the strict 
strict caveat that you get it at a discount price. If you're paying full price for this, then it's not quite such a good purchase at all. But if you can get a bit of money off, I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised with what this thing can do, as well as impress your friends, because to be honest, it's a nice looking laptop as well. So thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. And a massive thank you to Corsair, as always, for sponsoring the channel. Big thank you to everyone for watching, though. And hit that like button if you've liked this and dislike it if you didn't like it. Subscribe if you haven't already for more cool videos like this one. And if you want to see behind the scenes, it's at PCCentric on Twitter, Snapchat, and on Instagram. So thank you so much for checking out this video as always. If it's available on Amazon, I'll leave the Amazon links down below. Otherwise, I'll just use a generic store link. And be sure to be careful if you do pick up this product uh, that you get one that actually has the right SKU and that you don't uh, end up disappointed. So thank you so much for checking out this video, as always, and I'll see you in the next one.